Okay, so welcome. It's Monday, uh, which means it's hi from me and hi, hi from Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> um, this week we've got a really uh, great show. It's a holiday Monday here in Germany. Um, but that doesn't stop us from bothering people and dragging them online. So this <laughs> week, uh, we are very honored to have uh, the Konstantin Niehoff uh, in from Germany. And um, it's, it's a little different angle this week. We always talk about, you know, what all of small businesses are doing online. And um, Constantine is a different angle, uh, <laughs> which is kind of uh, his business started uh, really kind of before the whole online craze took off. And so maybe like an offline perspective. So um, welcome, Constantine. I don't want to tell all of your story because it's, I'll probably get it wrong. Uh, so <laughs> welcome. Thanks for uh, dropping by today. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure. So um, I remember, I mean, you and I go way back. Uh, we did. You were a student. 15 or so, yeah. At the university, that's right. And um, you were doing some funky things. I mean... I was doing chocolate sculpting. You were taking pictures of the chocolate. Um, you did the photographs in my first book, Art and Chocolate, mm -hmm. which came out in 2009. Uh, amazing photography. Um, but you, amazing chocolate sculptures. Yeah, well, I think they're all melted down now, except for one. Yeah, chocolate doesn't last long. <laughs> well, it's, it's performance art. art. Part it's performance, performance art. art. That's yeah. right. It's definitely that. Um, and you were doing some... Thing completely different uh, on the side um, and maybe you'd like to tell us a little bit about that uh. sure sure it's, <laughs> it, I mean it's, it's it's a fun thing because it's not something that people normally do you know photography okay you know almost everyone does and you know I did play the piano as well which also you know a lot of people do some kind of musical instrument or engage in music especially at university you know this is how you you know, you, 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 you get invited to parties, that, you know, uh, if you're a little bit more geeky, you know. But the, the, the interesting thing that, that I did was, um, uh, uh, if you call it perfume making, which is uh, something that is not a typical hobby. You know, some people might have a hobby as aromatherapy or something like that. But the difference between aromatherapy and perfume making is that, that aromatherapy is... Um, it, 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 you, you do that with a very conscious intention to influence right. your psychology in a certain way. And, you know, you want a fresh thing to feel energized. You want the lavender to feel, you know, calm and all, a lot of these stereotypical uh, uh, things. Um, what I was more interested in, and that's what uh, probably is, is, is the weird angle, is the connection between the, 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 the certain the sense of smell and what are you smelling with the images that you can see in your in your sort of yes. imagination that are just triggered um and and that was probably also something that triggered even my interest from psychology which is my my, my background when i did a, a paper i remember with with, with margaret schreier one of the instructors at, at, at jacobs um about the, the the connection between the uh, what is called imagery vividness and different psychological parameters, like the ability to uh, be more focused versus uh, focus on the details versus looking more abstractly at, at, at um, sort of the, the holistic image. Um, and, and, and different people um, and their sort of predisposed uh, psychologies had a different way of reading novels as well. Really? Um, so, so if you are a little bit more of a, um, uh, uh, you know, culturally predisposed to be thinking more holistically, meaning you're looking at the forest rather than the trees, let's say, um, your ability to empathize with the characters in the novel was more distanced because you had more of a contextual approach at, 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 at what you're reading rather than really engaging deeply and, and uh, uh, living through that. Um, and for me, that was also interesting. Basically, how do you connect that to all kind of other senses? Uh, and, and, and the sense of smell happened to be something I had been sort of curious way back. And, and that started evolving. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I was, you know, 
probably you know stinking up the whole uh, uh, campus building uh, with with experiments, which the majority of them didn't work out uh, uh, at all, um, uh, and a few, however, worked out, and and uh, they were the ones that I thought, okay, let me let's see what, what how I can incorporate them, um, and and we had. At, at the Jacobs, we had also a lot of exhibitions, uh, uh, art exhibitions, where I, I, I submitted also a couple of these uh, 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 as installations. You know, I remember yeah. there was a, a small bottle which I had filled with bits of, of, of various types of leather, which I had also used for book binding because that was another hobby that I had. Um, and, 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 and those were uh, uh, basically smelled uh, uh, with, with one of the, the things that I created. Because it had leather and um, or, or leather note in it, um, and that was one of the, the the pieces that was part of I, I forget what was the theme of the exhibition, but it was you know a big exhibition. I think Cornelia Lohmann she also won actually something at that exhibition, um, uh, uh, and, and 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 these are the kind of things that that uh, still to this day remain uh, you know with me as a hobby, um, and I'm surrounded here still with small bottles that I'm. Um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that is that is a blast from the past, indeed. Uh, that is a blast from the past. Yeah, there you this, go. Yeah, Alice so, in Wonderland. I had a bottle of this. So I'm kind of curious because you brought up a very good point, Constantine, of um, empathy as it relates to whether you look at the thirty thousand foot view or the you know your audience or the customer, right? Yeah. the whole picture or what's happening right now. And being able to distance yourself is important when it comes to protecting yourself from over empathizing or overly feeling in the case of war or any right. kind of trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and then we start a business, right? And then we're looking at like the big picture of it. When we look at the big picture, we lose that one-to-one -one customer empathy, which yeah. is, which, directly affects how well our business performs. I, right. wonder, I wonder if you think there is a connection between, especially with online marketing, which is mm -hmm. just the computer, the machine. It's this, already removed, yeah. There is an intermediary, existed. yeah. Yeah, and um, there's been kind of some desensitization. Mm -hmm. What would you uh, say to a small business owner about like how do you how how do you realize that you've done that that you're looking at the whole thing and not really thinking about that experience from the customer's point of view? Yeah, it's a super tough time. It's a challenge not just for a small business. I mean, my my day job is also uh, something like I think a lot of your guests uh, they have a day job as well in, this, in addition to this. Um, so my my day job is working at a big corporate. Um, and, and whether you were working at a corporate or in a small business, and if I try to imagine how my work, my life would have been if I had actually, you know, kept on that, that, that perfume hobby as a business and tried to grow it, the, 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 the biggest challenge for anyone managing such a, a, a task uh, remains both how do you look at the holistics and how do you go into the details? Um, how can you both... Um, understand the entire customer journey and design your experience around the customer journey. And at the same time, keep in mind the pressure that comes from actually managing an effective business, which is uh, uh, you know, not a pressure where you can afford to empathize with every single individual. Um, and and, and that, is, that is a, a, an extremely tough challenge, um, even more difficult as you alluded to uh, because when with most of the things that 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 we do nowadays um you know we we try to interact about it through digital medium and a lot of the things we might end up getting or or being marketed are not digital and they require a certain kind of emotional connection and that in creating that emotional connection is exactly part of that user journey that 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 has to be created um and then there is a third challenge in that which is well, it's our baby. And so if it's my baby, I have a much more different emotional attachment to it than my customer would. Um, and, and that oftentimes, especially for some of these more artistic things, like when I say with you know, uh, my, my perfume creations, um, I have a much more different connection 
than 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 anyone else might. And of course, when you open, you know, you can still read some reviews, and some of them still sting. You know, to this day, you know, twenty years later, uh, or or fifteen years later, um, and, and and that's okay because you know they're not created in a vacuum in a way. I think it's a bit arrogant if we think oh, art is art and it should be left, you know, without criticism. Um, so so. How does one balance that? Well, number one, um, I think it's a matter of finding um, finding partners in that thing that you're trying to build, who have the complementary skill set that you need right. and complementary ability to look at that. Um, not everyone is going to be able to juggle those. Most people would not. So finding that partner is critical. Um, and my day job is much more closely connected to the startup ecosystem. Um, there isn't a single startup that is successful and emerges being led by a single person and the rest, you know, just employees. You typically have a very strong duo or if not even a trio of people who have strong complementary skills uh, uh, in order to enhance the overall product experience and everything that comes with that in order to make the business. Um, so probably this is the one thing that, and, and that's something I never had with the perfumes, which is probably why, you know, 15 years later, uh, uh, you know, I'm no longer in the market. Thanks to the internet, there's still article or two out there, uh, as Warren pointed out, um, uh, but but uh, there isn't a business uh, uh, to speak of. Um, yeah. I think that's a really important point what you, what you made. Um, I was talking with a client in the UK this afternoon and her focus is sustainability, um, um, but from a business side, you know, creating, um, you know, sustainable buildings. And, um, you know, she wants to enter, you know, um, the world <laughs> online uh, as a consultant. This is what she does, mm-hmm. but she has no online presence. And this is one of her questions was, you know, how do I, you know, connect with people, um, you know, like thinking people? And, you know, that's a very good first question because what sustainability means for her Mm. It's not necessarily what sustainable sustainability means to other people. So this is the first step is to really understand what do I mean by sustainability and how mm. other people are talking about it and yeah. finding those, those, you know, those common uh, threads. And then she can connect with other people because otherwise, you know, you, you might just get a lot of people for whom sustainability is a political issue. Some it's an mm. environmental issue, some it's a business issue. And you want to find the proper people, the good people to connect with that will help you grow a business. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a, that's a very, very good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's basic SEO, you know. And, well, and, it and, is, but yeah. it is. It is, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the thing about SEO is it's, there's been all this snake oil salesman saying, oh, it's like magic. And, and then you forget that what it is, it's about human behavior. And that's mm-hmm. why I'm so excited that you're talking about this. I mean, that is basically the entire premise of my book, Keys to Being Social. It's all about mm-hmm. human behavior. And Warren and I talk about it in our online marketing book as well. Because the thing is, if you don't understand what people want, you'll never, mm-hmm. you'll never be successful. Right. And that's why, um, you know, advertising started by psychology and um, mm. just that, that ability to say, if you, if you buy this vehicle, you will, you will get this sexy girl, you know, that's. Which vehicle you, is that? Could you? What, like insert vehicle here. Oh, right? okay. All right. But there was a specific he was looking for tips. He was looking for tips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's always, there's always like that pairing. And, uh, you know, and then it changes because then it's like, oh, no, I'm a soccer mom, but I don't want to look like a soccer mom in a minivan. Mm -hmm. So like we we kind of exploit slash create needs. Right. And then we fill them uh, or we create dissatisfaction or we we kind of say, well, are you really doing as well as you could online? Mm. Hire me. You know, I only have two spots left. So I'm like, I'm creating doubt. I'm creating scarcity. You know, I'm, I'm like, are you really doing this right? And maybe you're not. And mm-hmm. that, that, I mean, it's, 
in some ways it feels kind of evil, but also you kind of have to show people there's another choice, right? Whatever it is, your product or services, you have to have that base psychology yeah. in your messaging, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the probably most influential, not most influential, most popular uh, psychology textbooks and popular in the sense that it's popular even beyond the psychology classroom um, is the book of, of, of Bob Cialdini uh, called Social Influence. Um, and, and he, I think he recently did even a, a republish where he added a seventh principle, but he had like six principles in it. Uh, some of them are the ones that you already mentioned from, uh, uh, you know, scarcity to authority, um, uh, social proof. Uh, and these are the kind of things that, you know, once you read it, you realize, well, this is just everywhere around me. Uh, right. uh, and, and is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Am I still influenced? Uh, even though I have a degree in psychology, am I still influenced by those principles? Sure, I'm still influenced by those principles. Um, I think what is probably dangerous for a company, whether small or a big one, is if it abuses these principles. Uh, right. Because once you get caught, and you inevitably always get caught, uh, uh, you know, then it, then, then it leaves a bad, taste in the mouth and and that's not a long sustainable or bad smell. Uh, thing or bad smell yeah <laughs> and 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 i think that this is this is probably something where a moral compass is also so critical for for every you know business uh, 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 that is starting which goes back to the sustainability topic as well right. um you know why do you do that do you do that for the business imperative do you do that for ecological for political reasons political motivations or or something else um and 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 a consumer consumers are smart they they send these things and you really don't want to mess with them uh, at the end of the day uh, uh long term yeah yeah i used to tell people that um our strategy was to make friends but it only works if they actually are your friends so mm -hmm. you have to avoid that cognitive dissonance. Yeah. yeah. So um, big question for you, Constantine. Um, <laughs> These are the small ones. The yeah, those are the small ones. ones. Yeah, now we get to the big, big ones. No, I mean, I remember, um, you know, uh, when Facebook first came out in 2004, you know, mm -hmm. I was in my in, in college three, and one of the students said, oh, you know, are you on Facebook? And she was like, what is Facebook? And I went in there and going, you know, well, this is going to have a short shelf life. Who wants this? Who needs this? You know, uh, and then two years later, Twitter, you know, and by the time Twitter came out, you know, I was, you know, a heavy Facebook user, you know, um, and then I've still got my original Twitter account, but I have no access to it, um, you know, and so we had these tools. They weren't the tools we understand them now. I mean, mm. we weren't, you know, advertising our, you know, our personal brand online. Yeah. Uh, mm. You know, if we had said anything like that, we would have been laughed at. <laughs> um, so I'm, I, I'm curious, and this is, you know, I, one of the reasons I was able to drag you onto the show um, was like, I'm really curious because, um, you know, I had my chocolate art and I was able to really promote that uh, online. Mm. Um, and if there hadn't been the online marketing uh, potential, you know, not many people have ever heard about my crazy, dangerous sculptures. And, mm. um, you know, I'm wondering if you, if you were doing your perfume now, if you were, you know, 18 again, and you had this mm. great perfume idea, um, with everything there is, TikTok, Snapchat, I don't know what else. Do you think that would have been different? Do you think that the, the online marketing that we now have, that you know, my 12 year old has, mm. um, would that have made a big difference? Would you, you know, I'm curious. Mm. I mean, it, what is interesting is that, okay, I, I need to give a bit of a primer also on, on the perfume industry as far as I understand it now, uh, also relatively removed, but because markets change as well, not just the, the medium through which we can, you know, uh, communicate about things. So um, number one, the, 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 you know, going back to, let's say the eighties, uh, the, the interesting thing is that I'm, I'm try, struggling where to start the story. Um, uh, so that it's not like a two hour uh, 
uh, tutorial on that. Um, you know, every decade, if you wish, um, is marked with a different um, approach to also cosmetics and and and, yeah. and and people embracing that. You know, the 80s oh, were fashion. the big florals, yeah. the things that, you know, if you smell it today, they suffocate you. And that's why <laughs> in the 90s, the next thing that came, you know, that the 80s is the time of poison and, and, and all of these big florals. Um, then the 90s came and it was all about the cleanliness and all about the, uh, you know, the fresh, the aquatic uh, perfumes. And I, uh, yesterday I was even reading a super interesting, uh, I think it was a New Yorker article um, in which they were explaining, you know, one of the reasons for the 90s being so fresh is that we were all just sick from, 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 from the news, particularly in the US where you had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the, the post AIDS crisis, you know, everything was, uh, you know, New York was being reborn at that time. Uh, you know, all these movements, social movements, they ended up translating into products and they right. get reflected into products. And, and, and perfume, of course, is, is one of those things. But what was happening in those years is that more or less, you had, let's say, 20 to 100 launches a year, not too many uh, compared to today. And, and what happened in the early 2000s is when um, a lot of things became just more accessible uh, in terms of ingredients and manufacturing facilities. Um, and so a lot of smaller brands started emerging, which of course, thanks to the internet and to the ability also to sell online, um, it made it also easier and more visible to see what is happening in that market. So a lot of um, also blogs started emerging dedicated to perfume reviews, uh, to, to uh, forums where communities could gather, discuss and even swap for many years before doing my own perfumes, I was part of a, 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 a forum that was called Perfume of Life, uh, uh, where you know we had you know scent of the day uh, discussions. Oh. We had swaps, uh, samples were being made, you know, decanted from one bottle into a small vial and sent overseas. And this, you know, for someone who before joined, before coming to Germany, and I was I was in Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, you didn't have access to some of the same brands because they were not imported and so on and so forth. And this was my access to that. And so this is what, that was my first touch point with the online world of, 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 of a fragrance, so to speak. And, and, and I think because of that, what's happening in the 2000s with these blogs, there were even one or two brands that actually emerged, strengthened um, uh, because, because they were built around the community. Uh, a community of, of, of people who simply wanted to support that person. And Andy Tower is a, is a fantastic example. Uh, he's a, basically a guy in Switzerland who started uh, on his own part-time uh, as a transition into his retirement, so to speak. I mean, he's not that old, uh, but, but he's in the, I think it was late 50s when he started transitioning, um, uh, uh, basically. And, um, and he, he cut his teeth in the early 2000s, um, uh, starting with his own blog. And since then, of course, he's added other channels of, of reaching out to people, but, but that was the foundation at that time. Now, what has happened, particularly in the past, I think 10 years, is that the number of launches have geometrically increased. So now we have 100 launches a month, um, which means that, marketing and advertising is acquiring an even stronger importance because yeah. it's no longer about the juice. It's no longer about the community. It's about the one-time sale you need to make. Um, and, 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 and the way to do that is through marketing. And marketing budgets have also been increasing because they have the competition now between the big guys who want with one campaign to serve the whole world. And then you have the small niche ones which have to find their way in this whole uh, jungle. Yeah. And, and, and the way that they have to find their way needs to be much more creative now. And, and both creative in terms of the juice uh, itself, which needs to be distinct and distinguished and, and not just a copy of something that someone is already making, but something that, that, uh, um, that connects on an authentic level, that doesn't use a celebrity uh, who endorses the fragrance, uh, that is uh, telling a story that people can relate to, uh, that reaches a probably a market that is much smaller, but much more devoted. 
uh, for yeah. example. And, and, and this is where you start seeing a lot of people uh, uh, indeed using, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, doing their own YouTube videos uh, about that, participating in, uh, in, in discussions um, or interviews with perfume reviewers uh, and, and so on. And these are, I think, fascinating media. Um, and I think the question, or, you know, if I were now trying to imagine what, what my life would have been if I start now actually doing something like that, um, I think the first thing that I need to get straight is the story. What is the story of this brand that I would right. be doing? Right. And, and, and because probably I don't have a clear answer to that, I'm not doing anything with it at the moment other than just experimenting with my bottles here. But, but I don't have a clear story that distinguishes from everything else that is on the market. Um, and it's not a story of the perfume itself or the fragrance, but it's the story of the brand um, right. uh, and, and, and the business that, that I'm supposed to be representing. Um, because the perfumes at the end, they're just a vehicle for expression, but they're not the, the story. And, 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 and then how do you get there? It needs to be in an authentic connection with, with the story that you're trying to tell. Um, so the first three perfumes that I did that weren't one of them was showing Alice in Wonderland. The others were based also on, on, the, on, on, on trying to translate the emotions, the images, the visual associations with olfactory associations of what certain books of fiction were trying to convey. So Alice Pretty in Wonderland on, is, is the story of, of, of this girl that we all know goes down the rabbit hole and goes to tea with with a mad hatter and so in that in that perfume i had tried to put a uh, uh, fresh mint which was suggesting at least my association of teas is 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 very you know various people have different association with teas but for me mint tea is a quintessential tea um it had then uh, a lot of cedar wood which is all about the the forest that she got lost multiple times and violets, because for me, violet, you know, she is a violet. She is a tender uh, and at the same time, very strong with this purple color, uh, 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 you know, and this was, this was how I created that story. Um, now, so would you retell that on TikTok? That's the thing. I don't know whether TikTok is the right medium to tell that story. It pro and it probably the story needs, um, needs to be broken down. Um, needs TikTok could be could be actually a good interesting media for that because in TikTok you can create smaller snippets that, right and people can react are, to it right that the smaller stories focused on different parts of that bigger story that you're trying to tell um you can do the same on Instagram um uh, yeah. uh, probably um with reels yeah um I mean now you can do that on Twitter you can do that on LinkedIn basically everyone is like the the, the yeah they're all copying each other it, it's all about where where is the audience you're trying to reach. I think um, the the uh, um, you know whether you do that with a video in reels or or something else, it just matters whether your audience is there, uh, so to speak. Um, yeah, but but and I think so. All of these media, I think they're worth exploring. Um, but but what you need to do first is is to know what is the story that you want to tell. Uh, what is the key message? Who are the people you try to reach? Um, yeah. If, if I want to reach, you know, only butch men, probably Pinterest is the, the wrong place to go because I think 90% yes. of the audience on Pinterest is women, just demographically speaking. Um, so, so those are some of the details that, that we all need to know uh, before launching that. Right. So would you be reaching out to butch men with your perfume? <laughs> Depends on the perfume, for sure. Yeah, there could be some. That's a, it's well, a really I mean, good, they uh, buy it for their people, daughters, mothers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Would they discover it on Pinterest, though, is the question. That's a good question. I mean, it's, it, I, I, I think, and I hear this from, I hear this from clients, and I feel this as, as well, that, it, you know, you sort of yearn for the good old days when it was like radio, television, print, and you could, you focused your energy on, okay, what is my brand? What is the problem that my product is solving? And who has that problem? And that was enough work. And now, on top of that, Mm. You've got to cater to the demands and the expectations of delight that are yeah. built into TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram. This is overwhelming. This is well, really scary. 
I'm not sure that you have to, um, you know. Um, so the I pressure is my, on. Yeah. The pressure is on. Like, here's the thing. Like, Constantine, I started my business this year, officially as a business. So mm -hmm. I'm technically an, a CEO. And anybody who wants to be a CEO can start a business with Atlas Stripe for $500. Mm -hmm. Woohoo, mm -hmm. I'm a CEO. But now I'm getting different ads on LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm getting ads for Louis Vuitton for their mm -hmm. fragrance literally sponsored posts yeah i'm yeah. like that's fine um also i'm not spending thirty five hundred dollars on a handbag but but they're but they're targeting the c-suite so you can also make an audience too i mean especially mm. like if you if you were starting with tiktok you're gonna find different reasons because for a while there was no real like people were still figuring out the use case you could mm -hmm. even be using uh, Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces and doing readings from Through the Looking Glass or mm -hmm. Alice in Wonderland and say and ask people, what is it that you feel right now with her trapped in the house? Yeah. What, what kind of sentiment does that have? And they could be saying, oh, I feel claustrophobic or I feel big or I feel powerful or whatever it is. And mm. as you and as you gain that insight and you're you're kind of entertaining, you're getting the literary nerds, you know, Absolutely. You're the people uh, who love mm. those novels and who like to wonder what that would be. And because it's something that they've only heard or read, they've never or and touched the book, they mm. miss out on having really a memory attached to that novel except mm -hmm. for that Mrs. Erickson read James and the Giant Peach to them and you're sitting on the floor you know, yeah. in fourth grade. Like that's all you remember yeah. about it, right? Instead you're like, no, let's go, let's take another dimension with Alice. You know, let's take a different look at her as an adult. Mm -hmm. Like what, what did you like about her? Because uh, it's just fascinating because I'm, I do book club with one of my very good friends. It's just the two of mm -hmm. us. And we did Through the Looking Glass in Alice in Wonderland. And I, as, as a 48 year old mm. woman, really identified with Alice because she, she was having issues with her identity. Mm. Big time in both books. Yeah. Like, mm. who, I'm, who am I and what is going on? And how do I relate to the world? And the world keeps changing. And as soon as I get big, then I'm small again, mm -hmm. right? That's our career growth. Yes, it is. So like, like if if you were doing this right now, I would be like images of Alice, uh, user generated content of people drawing her to win, um, uh, you know, doing a campaign for advertising by making it a contest and getting that community involved. Because mm. there are people that still love those books. They love those characters aside from the Disney version of which is some mm -hmm. kind of Frankenstein version of both books, right? Mm. And then like, what, what does that mean? What is the innocence and the responsibility you have when you tumble into somebody else's world? Poetry, um, design challenges, and all of these other things could completely be part of it. And then once you appeal to the people who love literature, mm. you're in, you have that community. Yeah. Sounds like you could uh, get back onto the perfume uh, oh bandwagon gosh, business. If you do, yeah. I, if you do I want the do Twitter account. I want yeah, the there you yeah. go. <laughs> so um, last question for you. Um, what's your favorite perfume? Um, that, that I've created somehow or, or no. that others have made? What perfume do you wear? Um, or yeah, what perfume do you wear? Well, what I don't really just what wear do? whatever I'm working on. The last thing that I'm working on, the last you wear like, your ten own. things. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's the good. last ten things I'm working on. Um, I think I think probably uh, if I had to single one uh, single uh, one out, uh, it's uh, probably uh, Eau Hermes, which is um, uh, it was quite old. It's created in the 1950s um, by a, a gentleman called Edmund Rudnitska. He is. Um, He's known for very few perfumes that have created. Uh, another one is Diorissimo, uh, also very uh, famous by Dior. Um, the interesting thing about uh, this uh, uh, nose, as they're called, is that um, 
he he emerged at a time just after the 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 second world war when when you know you had to also create in a different way you had to use different uh, um, uh, different ingredients because some of them were no longer available uh, uh, after after the war um, but but he emerged on the scene um, as, as 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 sort of the, the 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 person advocating that perfumery is an art form um, right. not too many people have done that before or or, or after um, and as such he was actually extremely eccentric to work for uh, and and uh, and and with um, and, and he ended up creating just about 13 or 14, I think, if you count them, uh, perfumes in his lifetime, which is, you know, uh, today's nose working for one of the big uh, perfume houses um, uh, or, or chemistry, they're actually chemical companies, uh, uh, probably makes uh, 100, uh, you know, a month uh, variations of something. And, and, and you know, the, the, the next iteration uh, um, for, for this spring of this bestseller from two years ago. So uh, and that was that was the interesting thing about him. And and when he created all their mess, um, he was hired by uh, the, the the House of Hermes um, to to create something that alludes to also Hermes leather bag. Um, and it's a perfume that they still sell to this day. Probably not exactly the same as as back in the day because ingredients change. There are a lot of rules that have been implemented by the European Union about certain allergens um, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but but it's still there and it's still on the market. Um, some perfume, there was one perfume reviewer who said probably there are three people in the world who love this scent and probably I'm one of them. And I think this critique was another one because it's a very peculiar one. Uh, it has a a very herbal and 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 uh, quite a strong note of cumin in it, which a lot of people associate cumin with, uh, with sort of negative associations uh, uh, like body odor. Uh, but but the way that it's wrapped to me it does not smell of it, and and, and that's why I, I find it so so a, a chameleon of fragrances, and why I love uh -huh. it so much. Yeah. So where can people connect with you if they would like to talk um, perfume? Um, probably Twitter is the best um, okay. because that's the Twitter account called Imperfection, which I still use to this day. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's I think I, I think I recently celebrated some kind of an anniversary. Um, uh, I don't know if it was two thousand and seven when I created or something like that. Oh, you've got the original account. Yeah, yeah, I still use that account. Wow, in that, in detail. I wish I had my original account. <laughs> yeah, two thousand eight. Uh, 2008. I have to 2008. check when, when when I registered mine. There you um, go. And you seem to be. Oh, there you go. There exactly. You go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. Good. And um and uh, I'm also on Instagram with the same account um uh, as well, ah. the same handle. Mm -hmm. Um and and of course I'm on uh, fa Facebook. I have not opened. I have to admit uh, yeah. for for now months. Yeah. So so although I'm on Instagram, you won't find me there. On 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 Facebook, you won't. Uh, get a response immediately there um, and of course I'm on LinkedIn which is uh, um, as I think you were discussing with Annabelle uh, a few episodes ago um, uh, it's it's mostly for my day job uh, yes. rather than yeah. for the hobby that's yeah. right well um, I hope that uh, we can uh, welcome you back to the show um, again uh, you know we talked about perfume there's um, startup culture in Berlin there is literature there is Hermes scarves uh, we could certainly uh, get into um, a plethora of, uh, of topics. Uh, we I hope can, we'll come indeed. back again. Happy to. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much yeah. for having me. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your uh, holiday Sunday. Thank you. Okay. Ciao. Bye.